Should I say, oh yeah, I'll just do it. What cancer has done to my family and my life. Let me start before anything happened. My father, Lloyd Bill Folds, was a kind-hearted, noble, and crafty individual. He had traveled all over the United States doing what folks used to call gypsy logging, which is a 70s term for heli logging. My dad would run cables around log bundles and attach them to hooks suspended from a helicopter hovering above. He spent years in the forest doing this because it was nature and adrenaline that drove him to be the best man he could ever be. My father loved nature and had a passion for animals. He studied them and did everything in his power to teach people about them. He loved all animals as if they were a family pet. There seemed to be an endless supply of stories about nature and animals stowed away in his powerful mind. A mind filled with vast knowledge, a lifetime of memories, and a passionate love for the people he encountered. Many people still come to me and pour their hearts out, saying that my father was one of the most genuine men that they had ever come to know. They tell me stories of how he laid everything on the line just to simply help someone else get through a hard time. They also tell me stories of how he did some not so smart things. My dad loved animals so much that he would try and give them food if he thought they needed help, even if it meant putting himself in danger. For example, one of my favorite stories my dad and his friends would tell me is that one weekend in July of 1972, my dad saw a bear that seemed hungry, so he fed it vanilla wafers through the small window of his Toyota Land Cruiser. The bear licked the window when he ran out of wafers and broke the mirror off with its paw. There's a hilarious picture of my dad standing next to his Toyota the next day, all scratched up and no driver's side mirror. That will never not be funny to me. It's memories and stories like these that I will never get to chuckle about with my father. The amazing mind he had and his endless supply of memories were taken away by glioblastoma, one of the most aggressive forms of brain cancer known to man. There's barely any treatment and it is without a doubt a death sentence. Most people live around three to four months with this disease. My father underwent two large-scale brain surgeries and 15 months of chemotherapy, so strong it brought him to his knees. My dad was one of the longest living people with this disease recorded at the University of Washington, where he received treatment. When my dad was young, he attended Oklahoma State University and wrestled at 195 pounds. He was a stocky and incredibly strong man throughout his life. As he went on with his age, he built up to 235 pounds at 6 feet tall. The chemo was so strong that by the time he passed, he was 135 pounds. Barely heavier than myself, but still 6 inches taller. It was horrifying and truly heartbreaking to watch a man of such good will and brute strength be whittled down to a sickly being that seemed to be simply waiting to die. I don't think anyone has ever felt pain the way people have felt watching someone go through the last year of their life like that. It truly crushes you as a person and it changes you in ways you hate. It changes you in ways that cause you to lie awake at night and yearn with tears and shivers just to feel like your old self for a day. On to my family and how I can interpret how losing our dad has affected us. Please take note that I have a very unorthodox family that doesn't get along. Our dad tried his best to hold us together, but we are not your average family. We struggle to see eye to eye. In the beginning, when my dad was first diagnosed, my brother and two sisters tried to work together to come up with a plan to try and help our dad in the best way possible. After a short two days, my sister Mariana, who was 20, decided not to take part. All that was left was my brother Thomas, who was 36, and my sister Ashley Joy, who was 35. I, being the youngest, felt like there was pretty much nothing I could do. I considered dropping out of school to be there for my dad, but when I told him that, tears started to flow from him. He looked at me and said, I couldn't ask anything like that from you. If you want to help me the best you can, then finish your education, son, please. My sister Ashley Joy worked at the Bellingham CTK and was able to take many days off to take dad to his doctor's appointments in Seattle and help him try to eat as much as he could so the chemo wouldn't completely ruin his body. My brother Thomas works at Georgetown Brewing in Seattle, and he was also able to take a lot of time off to be there for dad. He and I would go out there as many days as we could and try to do any manual labor dad asked of us. Mariana lives in Utah, and she decided it was best to exclude herself because she didn't want to live in the reality of what was really happening and what was about to happen. 
Watching Dad slowly deteriorate was incredibly hard on our relationships. Stress between our stepmom and each other became dangerously high, and we would often excuse ourselves to scream at each other. We all wanted different things to be done, and it seemed like everyone wanted to point a finger at who wasn't doing enough. Since Dad passed, I've only been able to contact my stepmother and my sister Ashley Joy. Thomas has decided to take his time, and Mariana has decided that she no longer wishes to be associated with us. Since there was no more backbone, my family has nearly completely fallen apart, piece by piece, and I fear every day that I will soon have none left. When a family member passes from cancer, the way my dad did, life becomes very skewed and lonely. A constant fear dawns upon you that you'll more than likely meet the same fate, and instead of fear driving you to live your best life, it slows you down because now life feels like you're just waiting. You're waiting for that one doctor visit where the doctor will sit you down and give you your death date on a piece of paper. It's a grueling and painful fear that destroys all motivation, appetite, willpower, and joy that you once felt. Everyone you look at seems to be glowing with ambition while you're simply waiting for your time to come. It's no way to live. You feel terribly alone with people all around you, and you wonder why, at the end of the day, they always seem to leave without you. It's like because of what happened to your family, people avoid you. They look at you differently. They talk about you differently. And they act differently around you because they think that they should. Conversations you used to have now always turn into talking about what I go through every waking day. It's like I'm forced to relive every emotion I felt when I saw my father for the very last time just because someone else is interested in what that's like. It feels like people treat you like some type of novel or movie. People just want to hear what I go through so they can compare themselves to my life and feel better about who they are. That is what hurts the most. When I was young, I took many things for granted. I never even thought about simply getting enough sleep. Now. All my emotions, mostly regret, keep me awake until far into dawn because I simply cannot stop thinking about ways I could have spent more time with my dad. Time I will never get back. I think about things I wish my dad would have said to me and things I wish I would have never said to him. I think of how everything I did in life made him feel. I think of all the times I made him feel proud of me for being his son, and I think of all the times he and I fought because we simply could not agree on something. I think of all the times I went behind his back and all the times I lied to him. It keeps me awake because I can't seem to stop thinking about how he felt. How could I have been a better son to him, or how I simply wish I could just say I was sorry. There are many stages to the form of cancer my dad had. First, there's the initial stage that causes something drastic to happen. For my dad, it was a seizure. For my dad, it was a seizure, as it is for most people with a brain tumor. Many people think a brain tumor is just a ball of excess flesh that grows on the brain. In some cases, that's true, but not for people suffering from glioblastoma. GBM, as, as it is referred to, is like grains of sand that fall upon the surface of the brain. The surface of the tumor is all that can be operated on because the rest of the disease seeps deep into the brain and kills it from the inside out. After my dad's first major surgery, his memory started to die. My dad's cancer started on his left temporal lobe right behind his ear. As the cancer seeped into his brain, his short-term memory was a total loss. He seemed to be in a near state of amnesia where most things that happened the day before were a total loss to him and he had no recollection. After some time, the cancer started to spread into his prefrontal cortex and deeper into his temporal lobe. My dad's ability to make decisions, hold a conversation, remember what he was thinking, or even share his memories were gone. His brain was slowly dying from the inside out. It is very hard to watch someone you love go through that because there is truly nothing you can do. No amount of prayer, money, or power can stop their brain from slowly and painfully dying. After about a year of harsh chemotherapy, radiation, and surgery, my dad became nearly a vegetable. It was about midway through December when my dad lost most of his ability to speak. He could mutter simple words if he didn't forget them. 
His tumor had gone metastatic, which is a term that means it's spreading faster than his treatment can handle, and it had surrounded his entire brain. There was a very harsh tipping point for my dad's condition on Christmas Eve. His cancer had spread to his brainstem, and he could no longer move on his own. It was a combination of too weak, and he didn't have any motor control. All he could simply do was look around. It seemed like he was trapped in this prison of his own mind. His cancer had formed a lead wall around his thoughts, preventing anything from coming out or going in. There was a point where he just started to cry. He looked at each of us and tried to mouth words, but he couldn't, and he just cried. He was completely trapped inside his own head and had no power left to push past the cancer. It was after that day he knew all he could do was wait. When speaking became tough for my dad, he would smile at you when you spoke to him. He would smile the biggest smile he could make so you knew that he had his hopes up and he had faith. But after that day, my dad stopped smiling. It was very apparent that he had become very depressed. He knew his fate and he knew there was no more fighting it. He still took his medication, but in his own head, he knew there was nothing he could do. My dad passed on the morning of January 11th at 5.26 a.m. A morning that will haunt me for years to come. There is very little known about this very aggressive form of cancer, but there is one key link that doctors have been able to find, and that is alcoholism. Alcohol had had a significant play into people with this form of brain cancer. People who suffer from alcohol abuse are six times more likely to develop this disease than those who don't. If you or someone you know suffers from uncontrollable alcohol abuse, please seek help. Their lives could depend on it.